By the end of this video, you should understand the options that are available to you in the year that you turn 71 and you must convert your registered retirement savings plan, otherwise known as your RRSP. Hi, I'm Gordon Weep. I'm registered as an underwriter in the provinces of BC, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. My practice focuses on helping clients meet their financial goals and objectives, typically through the use of annuities. Just prior to getting underway, regulations require the following disclosure. This video is published on or about September 1st, 2020, and it is for illustration purposes only. This is not an offer to purchase securities or products. No representation is made. Items presented here may not be suitable for everyone. Rates will change and valuations will fluctuate, sometimes wildly. Please consult an experienced qualified licensed professional prior to investing to ensure that your investments are a part of a comprehensive plan designed to help you and your family meet your long-term financial goals and objectives. Also, when recommending products and planning strategies, broad tax and legal issues may be discussed. Nothing should be construed as tax or legal advice. Okay, now that you've climbed aboard, sit back and enjoy the ride. Here's our agenda. We'll establish some principles to apply when you go to convert your RRSP. Number two, we'll explore the options available to you. Number three, we'll review the advantages and disadvantages of each option. And number four, we'll formulate an action plan. We're going to start this presentation with some cautionary advice that originates some 2,500 years ago from about 400 BC. Aesop created a fable that still serves as a cautionary tale for retirees. Namely, don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Regular sustained payments tend to be more valuable over the long haul, and much heartache is created by wanting or thinking that somehow more is available. In the year that you turn 71, you must convert your registered retirement savings plan. In a sense, what you really need to do is convert your nest egg into a stream of income that will last the rest of your life and possibly the life of your spouse. You have three options available to you. Number one, you can redeem it. It's a horrible option for reasons I'll explain momentarily. Number two, you can convert it. This is the default option. Consequently, more retirees select this option without too much consideration. The third option is that you can annuitize it or convert it into an annuity. It's much like receiving a guaranteed pension plan, but more on that in a bit. Let's look at the first option. When you receive funds from a registered plan like your RRSP, a pension plan, or your RRIF, it is always taxed like your paycheck is taxed. If you redeem all of your RRSP, all of your proceeds will be taxed at your marginal income tax rate. That could vault you into the highest tax bracket and you could see a large portion of your registered savings taxed away. For example, suppose you had $200,000 in your RRSP. If you withdrew it, roughly one third or 66,000 would be taxed. That would leave you with 134,000 from which to draw a perpetual income. And if you had earned income during the year, that rate would be even higher and you would lose even more to taxes. This option is just simply not recommended, unless of course you wanna cook your goose. Option number two is the default option and the one selected by most retirees. It's often promoted by banking institutions and advisors who wish to maintain your assets with their institution. But given the risks associated with this option, they may not have your best interest at heart. If you select this option, you should be asking yourself the following questions. A, how familiar are you with the withdrawal schedule and how it affects your assets and your income? B, who is going to manage the funds, not just today, but 20 years from now? Will your current advisor still be with you or will he or she have moved on or even retired? What sort of rate of return can you expect over your lifetime? C, how long do you expect to live and how have you underestimated yours and your spouse's life expectancy? D, have you considered the possibility of a cognitive decline and how it affects your ability to make decisions or even sign a contract? E, how much exposure do you have to market swings and the risk of a prolonged market downturn? Now let's have a look. First, if you convert your RRSP to a RIF, you must withdraw an increasing percentage of your funds according to the prescribed schedule. That's seen here. 
Annual income is calculated by taking the value of your RIF on December 31st of the previous year and applying the prescribed percentage based on your age. In your 70s, you're required to withdraw between 5.4 and 6.82%. That steadily increases throughout your 80s and even more in your 90s. If math is not your strong suit, know these two things. First, if you withdraw more than your RIF earns, your RIF balance will begin to decrease. That would likely mean repeated cuts to your retirement income, possibly for life. Second, if there is a severe market downturn as you begin the withdrawal process, your funds could again suffer a permanent loss of capital. The sequence of returns on your money is critical. Let's explore that. Suppose there was a couple. We'll call them Ted and Whoopi. 25 years ago, Ted and Whoopi contributed 5,000 to their RRSP and they contributed $3,000 a year thereafter. Their funds compounded at about 6.47%, which is actually the rate of the Toronto Stock Exchange compounded over the past 20 years. They now have $200,000 in their RRSP. They've decided to convert it all to a RIF. During their savings years, the sequence of returns was not a critical factor. Some years their holdings declined, but as long as they stayed with the program, the good years outweighed the declines. It didn't matter what the returns were in any given year, as long as the returns were more favorable over the long term, and they were. That changes, however, when you begin making withdrawals from your registered account for income purposes. Withdrawing funds is a bit of a balancing act. And if the markets suffer a 32% decline as they did in 2008, your funds could be depleted sooner and the probability of replenishing those funds is far less likely. Here's a table. It shows how the sequence of returns affects two retirees born three years apart. The first retiree received a favorable 14% return on his RIF during his first year after conversion. And although the retiree did okay over the longer term, his income fluctuated as his principal values changed. The second retiree didn't fare so well. He earned 1% during the first year after his conversion, and thereafter he saw the value of his funds drop 31% during the second year, resulting in a drop of retirement income. The returns used in the table mirror the returns of the TSX over the past decade and a half. In a perfect world, you could put your RIF into a GIC that would return a steady 4% for 30 years, and your RIF would never run out of funds. But that's simply not the environment that we exist in today. Interest rates are at record lows, and there's no telling how long before they return to some sort of normalcy. Now, if that wasn't hard enough to figure out, there's still other factors needing to be considered. Are you familiar with life expectancies or thought about how long you might expect to live? Don't worry if you haven't, nobody really has. But know this, as you age, your life expectancy actually increases. That's because the people who didn't survive brought down the previous average. Life expectancy is a bit of a moving target, as this table shows. Your life expectancy increases the older that you get. There are still more risk factors. What if you suffer a decline in your cognitive abilities? Who makes decisions about administering your investments? What if you lack legal capacity to sign a contract? Here's one final risk factor to consider. Investors and portfolio managers have long histories of basing projections on recent history. We're now in the 11th year of the longest bull market ever, and people have long forgotten what a bear market looks like and how it affects values, returns, and income. I explore this in greater detail in a couple of other presentations, and you may wish to click on the links below but know this, if we enter into a prolonged market downturn, and I have lots of reasons to believe that we are, countless retirees will see the values of their lifetime savings plummet. Finding sources of income will be a challenge. Now the third option available for your RRSP is to convert it into an annuity. An annuity is simply a financial instrument provided by a life insurance company. In exchange for a premium, they agree to pay you, an annuitant, a regular sustained guaranteed income for life. Rates are highly competitive and are based on age, gender, the number of lives, and life expectancy versus market returns. Instead of watching the value of your retirement funds decline as you age, 
you can allocate a percentage of your assets and convert them into a guaranteed income stream for the rest of your life or the lives of you and your spouse. That leads to the fourth option. If you're needing your income to last for decades, the most prudent course of action is to allocate portions of your retirement assets into A, a highly competitive guaranteed income stream for life, and B, long-term investments like equities and real estate holdings. At this stage of the interest cycle, I would suggest exchanging all fixed income securities like bonds for annuities. Bonds currently possess minimal upside potential, but they maintain lots of downside risk. This risk table shows how combined strategy works to mitigate all of your risks while still providing a competitive retirement income with a lessened risk profile. So let's review. If you're driving down the retirement road, you must convert your RRSP in the year that you turn 71. You have a few options available to you, but the best option might be to consider combining an annuity with your long-term equity investments. For more information, contact me, Gordon Weeb, via email at gord at think-income.com or visit my website at www.think-income.com. If you've enjoyed this presentation and found it informative, please give it a thumbs up just below the screen and consider viewing the other presentations on the Think Income YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Remember, please stay safe, stay sage, and stay well.